guys, welcome to a brand new video. My name is Conan and today I'm gonna be taking you guys through my entire leg workout. So let's get into it. Before we do get into it though, I do have something very special in my bag right now, which is in this right here. So I cannot remember the last time I had an energy drink. Like, I feel like the last time I actually had an energy drink was probably during prep last year, where I had one like pretty much every single day. And since then, I just kind of been not having them because I don't know, it's just, hmm, I don't know, I don't really, I don't know, man. But anyway, long story short, Rain actually dropped a brand new flavor. This is the white gummy bear. So you already know I had to pick it up and I have to give you guys a taste test slash review. So let's crack her open. Oh my God. It spilled all over my hand. It's going to be all sticky. Anyway, smell test. I don't smell anything. Oh, well, it's literally everywhere, man. It's all over my car too. Damn. No. Oh. Camera almost fell too. Gee, what? Well, this is not a good intro. Stay. Anyway, let's just wrap this thing up. Let's give it a taste test. White gummy bear. It's kind of disgusting. It kind of reminds me of like the um, a white gummy bear from like the Haribo kind of gummy bears, but it's not a good flavor. Like I can definitely taste it, but just the flavor itself is it's kind of bad. Like oh no, not for me, man. Oh, the taste is it's just off, man. Four out of ten. Alright guys, just made it to the gym, got my squat belt and my lifting shoes, so we're ready to go. Alright, so the workout I'm about to share with you guys right here is actually the last workout of my second mesocycle. Now, for those of you that don't know what a mesocycle is, it's basically just a block of training which can last anywhere from about four to eight weeks. Now, obviously, depending on your experience level, this could be longer or shorter. So for most advanced trainees, your mesocycle usually lasts a bit shorter because your MEV and your MRV, which basically stands for your minimum effective volume and your maximum recoverable volume are a lot closer to each other compared to when you're more of a beginner your MEV and your MRV are a bit more split out so your mesocycle can be stretched out a bit further so this specific block of training for me lasted about seven weeks and like I said this is the final week of my second mesocycle and now basically as the mesocycle progresses you want to progressively either add more volume up the intensity or add more load to the bar or do a combination of all three of those things so obviously the final week of your mesocycle should be the most hardest and most difficult week of training and it's almost supposed to be like super unsustainable because um you're pretty much going to be overreaching and you're not going to be able to beat what you did this week so you're basically going to go all out leaving around one to zero reps in the tank so again not leaving anything in the tank you really want to overreach and really push yourself hard because you know after this week you'll know you have an entire deload week to recover and obviously during your deload week you'll be able to recover and your muscles will be a lot more resensitized and then the week following that going into week one of your brand new mesocycle you'll most likely drop the sets and drop the intensity a bit because your muscles are a lot more sensitive sensitized now so you don't need as much volume and as much intensity to get gains. So I hope that kind of made sense to you guys and so for this specific workout we did 230 pounds for four sets of eight reps and I'll just give you guys some context. I started this mesocycle a couple of weeks ago doing 205 pounds for three sets of eight reps. So as you guys can tell over the course of these past couple of weeks I've gradually increased the weight, I've gradually increased the intensity and I've also added one extra set to my exercise. So these four sets of eight reps right here were pretty much all out. Like I knew I definitely did not have an extra rep in the tank. I would try to go for nine reps here. I don't think I could get it. And specifically for compound lifts, um, I don't really want to push myself too, too much because your risk of injury is a lot higher doing compound lifts compared to like an isolation exercise, like a leg extension. So for most compound lifts, especially on the last week of your mesocycle, I try to leave maybe close to one rep in the tank because again, going all out to failure on a compound lift is not only dangerous, but again, it can increase your risk of injury, injury as well. And um, the last thing you want is being injured and um, put yourself out of the game for a couple of weeks. That's just not worth it in my opinion. So um, yeah, again, for most compound lifts, you don't have to necessarily go all out, balls to the walls, on your last and final week of the mesocycle unless you have like a spotter obviously but for most isolation exercises like leg extension or leg press or a leg curl or stuff like that you can definitely go all out which you'll see later on so after doing those four sets of eight reps on the squats which by the way absolutely sucked we moved on to some romanian deadlifts now again to give you guys some context i started at around 225 pounds for three sets of six reps and now we're doing 245 pounds for four sets of eight reps so again as you guys can tell i gradually increased the the load, increase the intensity and added one extra set. And I've been a bit more cautious of adding weight to the RDLs because I feel like 
the more weight I slap on the bar, especially if I do it super fast week by week, um, I tend to like lose my mind muscle connection with my hamstrings. And I feel like most of the pressure is mainly just on my lower back. So that's not something I want. My main goal is to train for hypertrophy and not necessarily strength. So um, once I do kind of lose my mind, mind muscle connection, I will be a bit more careful of adding too much weight because again, your mind muscle connection is absolute key. So even though we're not adding weights like by a lot, we are still trying to increase the weight week by week. If not that, we try to increase the reps or increase the sets. So after those two compound lifts are done, we moved on to sort of more isolation type exercises. So again, like I mentioned, for the isolation type exercises, you'll probably see me go all out, leaving probably zero reps in a tank. So here we're doing the leg press. And um, yeah, again, we started at, I think doing three plates at the beginning of the meso cycle a couple of weeks ago. And now we're doing four plates, which is a pretty big jump. Like considering I haven't done leg press in a really long time, I was able to progress pretty quickly week by week with this exercise, which is absolutely awesome. As you guys can tell, like I've been going a lot deeper now as well. I've been going full ROM, full range of motion. And let me tell you, these tear your quads apart. I used to go, not that I intentionally tried to do this, but I was pretty much going partial range of motion. So I wasn't going as deep down as I as I possibly could. Whereas now I'm a lot more mobile, I'm a lot more flexible. And um, yeah, again, as you can tell, my range of motion is a lot deeper now. And uh, yeah, your quads will thank you for it. Probably not while you're doing it because they'll be screaming at you, but after, I mean, your quads will thank you because um, this is a great exercise. So yeah, super deep leg press here. Um, five sets here of, I mean, the first set we did 15 reps, which was pretty much all out. But then the second set, we only managed to do 10 because um, obviously you do tend to fatigue as the training session goes on. And the more sets you do, most likely the less reps you'll be able to do. So for the first set, you did 15, for example, um, don't necessarily expect to do 15 again on your next set because again, you'll be a lot more fatigued now and it's pretty much gonna be impossible to match the same reps you did on your last set. So yeah, we did 15 reps here and then followed by 10, 10, 10, and then eight. So yeah, these are really challenging, um, pretty much leaving zero reps in the tank. Then for the final exercise of our hamstrings, we did some lying leg curls. So yeah, again, because this is an isolation type exercise, we pretty much left zero reps in the tank, zero RIR, which stands for zero reps in reserve. So again, pretty much going all out. And um, yeah, for this specific machine, like I'm not too scared of going all out, um, even going beyond failure by doing some partial reps or even some drop sets because um, your risk of injury is super low. Like I have not met anyone being injured by doing a line leg curl machine. So um, especially if your reps are fairly high, anywhere from about 10 to 20, you should be pretty good to go. Because your hamstrings are primarily composed of fast switch muscle fibers, they tend to fatigue a lot quicker as well. So for my first set here, I think I did 12 reps. And then for my second set, I could only manage to do like eight reps. So again, don't be surprised if your reps start to fill the more sets you do because your hamstrings get fatigued pretty quickly. So again, we did another five sets here going all out. And then for the last of no exercise of today, we finished with some standing calf raises. So here we did six sets. Um, I started my muscle cycle doing, I think, four sets. So we've gradually increased the sets. I do like to hit my calves a bit more frequently. So I do train my calves three times per week compared to my glutes, hams, and quads, which I only train two times per week. So I feel like with your calves, frequency is definitely key. And not only that, intensity as well. Simply put, because you're walking pretty much all the time and you're using your calves pretty much all the time, um, you really gotta like just hammer them and like train with like super high intensity and I like going pretty high in reps here. I don't like to go super heavy with like five to 10 reps because your mind muscle connection simply is not there. And um, I feel like the higher reps you go, the more of a burn you feel and the higher your mind muscle connection is as well. And coincidentally, this last week of my muscle cycle actually happens to be my last week here at home as well because um, as you guys know, I got a new car recently and I'm planning on doing a pretty sweet road trip pretty much next week. So um, yeah, this whole mesocycle thing actually perfectly aligns with my travel schedule. So when I'm traveling next week on the road, road trip in, I'll most likely not be training as much as I would like. So I think this comes really in handy. I'll take my deload week while I'm kind of on the road traveling. Whereas now when I'm actually at home and I actually have access to a gym, I'll be grinding out this last final week, going all out, leaving nothing in the tank. And then next week when I'm on the road, I'll get to deload and recover. And I'm not gonna say where I'm gonna be going yet, but if you guys are curious, definitely stay tuned subscribe to my channel because um it's going to be a sick time and i'd love to bring you guys with me so as you guys know i'll be vlogging everything i'll be sharing with you guys as well so definitely stay tuned for that
right, so we're dinner, we're making up some chicken breast with some potatoes in the microwave right there. And the way I season my chicken is by using some of this seasoning right here, some Vegeta. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's basically like a food seasoning. It's like a, I don't know, it's really good. Try it out. So once the potatoes are ready and our chicken is cooked, I'll grab some vegetables, cook them up, and then add an avocado on top, and that should be that. Anyway, so for dinner these past few nights, I've been having pretty much the same dinner. I don't know why, I really like enjoy it, so I tend to stick to it. So what we got here is 350 grams of some yellow potato. Then I've got some bunch of vegetables, we've got one whole avocado, and then 100 grams of some cooked chicken breast. So pretty big meal right here, pretty calorically dense as well, and super healthy as well. It's not really a recipe, it's just more of a meal, but it is a very delicious. Now I know what I just said may sound a bit confusing to some of you, but just keep in mind that usually you know it's time to deload when you stop making progress. So let's say for example, you were increasing your weights week after week, you were increasing your sets, increasing your reps, but then suddenly on week six of your muscle cycle, you stop making gains and you're actually regressing. So let's say last week you did four sets of eight reps, but then this week you could only manage to do four sets of six reps. And if that's happening with all of your major muscle groups, so your quads, your shoulders, your pecs, your back, etc., etc., then you know that it is time to deload because unless your goal is to progressively underload and progressively get weaker, I mean, you should just stop, take a break, recharge, reset, and then come back again the week after. So as much as I would like to just keep going all out, balls to the walls, grind 24-7, 365, that simply is not sustainable. If you have a look at any of the Mr. Olympias, so including Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Chris Bumstead, every single one of them took weeks, if not months, off after their competition prep because simply going all out year round is not sustainable. Your body needs a break in order to recharge and come back stronger. So I do believe that taking detail weeks every four to eight weeks is absolutely essential for a long-term process and now you can't simply just get away with taking deload weeks for a week every four to eight weeks for like ever because there comes time when your body is just so unsensitive to all the volume you're doing you simply need like a longer break than that so this is usually when you just take a maintenance phase and you train at minimum volume so like I said your goal should be to train from minimum effective volume to maximum recoverable volume during your muscle cycle but on a maintenance phase you want to train at your MV which is your minimum volume and that could literally be one-third of your minimum effective volume Volume. So let's say normally your minimum effective volume for most of your muscle groups is nine sets. Your minimum volume to simply just maintain your muscle mass and muscle size is one third of that. So like probably three sets a week. So that's literally just like three sets on the bench press and you're done for the week. So doing that for two to four weeks every now and then flushes away all of your fatigue. It resensitizes your body and your muscle groups so that you can get away with doing less. So again, I know that was a lot of information to kind of take in and digest. I do believe that taking small little breaks is almost like like taking one step back in order to take two steps forward because we're not machines because if we were I mean, we'd all be bench pressing like a thousand pounds, squatting 2,000 pounds, and deadlifting 3,000 pounds. Like, if we could increase the weight each and every week, I mean, we'd be absolute animals, we'd be machines, but that simply is not the case. Rest and recovery is absolutely crucial to kind of reset the body in order for us to continue growing further. If you guys do want some more information about this whole type of stuff, I definitely do recommend checking out the Mike Gears Hotel on YouTube. He posts super informative videos just like this about deload weeks, your mesocycle, cycle, your volume, your minimum effective volume, your maximal recoverable volume, and stuff like that so definitely if you guys are kind of intrigued about learning about this whole training thing definitely go check them out anyway with that said if you guys enjoyed this video please be sure to go give this video a thumbs up i would highly appreciate it subscribe to my channel if you're new and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out